Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, July 17th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indetermined Length, episode number 656. And I don't have a Huey Lewis clip realized really wouldn't be nice to have a Huey Lewis in the news clip. That's a weird statement. Going back in time. Do, do, do. Thank you. Okay. Because the discography in my brain, I could not pull that drawer of the file cabinet out <laughs> to begin <laughs> to go digging through i was like sitting here going mm, nope it's not happening <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> artists from the 80s fair yeah, very fair speaking of the 80s yes <laughs> that's that's the segue <laughs> i'm not sure if you could tell that but that was called a segue <laughs> Gary, what are we talking for about? For anyone today? that has not really been to Comes Out Loud before, welcome to what used to be known as <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because our our professionalism is uh, Wait, professional? <laughs> First we're talking about Huey Lewis, who I, I was like I, I think I know and I don't even know if that's I don't even think that's a you song. You see Back here. to the Future, right? So, yes, 30-ish years ago. <laughs> Anyways, he had, he, had a, he, his, he had a big hit that was from the soundtrack. Anyways. Yeah, he had several big hits. But... From the, from, uh, anyways, from the oh. franchise, from the movie. But anyways. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> anyways. Such a stellar way to begin the episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so here's the thing. Um, so today's episode is called Nostalgia for Sale, question mark. Um, here's, here's, here's the thing. Um, I have been on a journey recently of like doing a lot of background research for something later this year for me personally. And it got me thinking about like, because there's going to be a lot of uh, expense tied into this thing. And so I was like, okay, like, you know, I was trying to like, you know, think more strategically about the best way to do something. And in the midst of all that, I started thinking about how, like, what people are spending money on and what they're doing with their money, if they're of our age, so to speak, our kind of generation. Okay. So that brought up the following question. So as adults that grew up in the 80s and 90s, is our childhood being marketed to us as a grab for our wallets? Is the world environment with a heightened anxiety and stress giving us more reason to buy things that bring back memories of childhood happiness, of a better time when things seemed simpler and we enjoyed it enjoyed life more okay and i know that's a little wonky because as a child you don't have as many responsibilities necessarily you typically here in the u.s don't have to have like adult kind of things expected of you you're just supposed to grow up 
Typically. You're just supposed to learn things, that kind of stuff. So hence this, this came about as an idea, as a subject. Um, nostalgia, just so everybody knows for the definition, oh. um, is a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past. And it's typically for a period or a place with a happy personal association. And some people believe that nostalgia is like a made up thing. Like it doesn't really technically exist, mm -hmm. but I kind of understand this definition because it's, it's, a, it's more emotional based. So it's not a thing that you can touch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it's not a physical thing. So I just can't, I can't go shopping for nostalgia or can I? <laughs> um, yeah. It's so okay. It's okay. so funny to like do to think of that, but uh, I will let Jeff go because he kind of commented first. I mean, of course. How many? How many retro like Super Mario Brothers shirts, or like an old like uh, the Def Leppard shirt, or uh, different hats, or things such as? Hey, there has been series seasons of. He-Man that's been released on Netflix. New versions. We've had had uh, She-Ra, Princess of Power. We also had had Voltron. All this is based off of stuff from way back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I mean, bringing back Transformers as a big, big uh, uh, movie enterprise. I mean, it's it's all updated stuff but it's trying to get your buck because of nostalgia from those kids who in 1985 cried when Optimus Prime died. <gasps> spoilers! The 1985 <laughs> movie. I think we're out of spoiler range. I don't know, Jeff. It hasn't been 40 years yet. It's been over 35. <laughs> According to the creator, Baking Bad, Brat, Bad, two weeks, that's it. I'm just, I was, I was, doing it as a as a joke yeah, yeah. right if you, right, if you right, didn't right. know if you didn't know if i didn't uh, realize that if you didn't if you didn't know that oh, Alpha Prior was dead i I'm, I'm sorry for you or died in the died in the 1985 movie right. he, uh, later in the series he was resurrected because apparently rodimus prime wasn't cool enough was... well i like rodimus prime but, but, okay, so Jeff gets it, like, hammer on the head of the nail. Mm -hmm. Like, those are exactly the examples of things that were coming to my mind about that. Now, one could debate and when say... When to bring out G.I. Joe. More G.I. Joe. Oh, wait, they did. It's coming, though. I mean, they, I did, mean, they, they, they did the really, really bad movie, but then they stopped. So it's yeah. like, eh... Yes, I do. And I, but I think there's a movie in the works right now, if I recall correctly. Hopefully, um, it's a good one. <laughs> isn't that what our generation says about everything? Well, hopefully, it's a good one. I mean, uh, well, even Star Wars is thrown in nostalgia because we're, we're we're almost almost twenty years. There was no Star Wars between 1983 and 1999. Mm -hmm. And then then that they re re released the movies, and then. Eventually, even after even that prequels, there was a long gap until they had the uh, uh, sequel trilogy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's again. It is a um, grab. It's a tug at the heartstring, tug at the memory, tug at the feelings um, kind of thing. It's very much that, and okay. it's a it's a way to make certain things relevant for modern audiences as well. Okay, that last part is fair. I just want to say for all of this tugging, baby, if you're going to get into my wallet, like I want to enjoy the tugging. Like, I'm just putting that out there for the record. Anyways. Usually when it comes to tugging, I don't, I don't pay for that, but, you know, that's just me. Right, I don't either. But yeah. if I'm gonna pay for it, like it better be good. Like, and I better like it. That's what I gotta say about that. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, so as a, as a perfect example, um, 
I when the GI Joe, I will use the GI Joe movie because it was one of the ones I watched. When the GI Joe movie came out, I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. I like the idea behind this. It's, I I think I would appreciate a live action retelling or re you know whatever they're plan whatever they're planning to do with this because I think I will enjoy this as a kid who I don't think I really played with the toys as much because uh, yeah, but um uh. Hmm. Um, but uh, like you were about the Barbie, we understand. Well, I had so <laughs> I had, I had a younger sister who was closer to age to me than my brothers. So by the time like GI Joe and stuff came out, like while they were kind of into it, they were also a little too old for it, and I wasn't as into it because I wouldn't have had anyone to play with it. Right. Yeah, we had kids in the neighborhood anyway. Um, so, but I went and watched it, and I was thoroughly disappointed. Um, I did no, that's not true. I did kind of enjoy it, the first one. But was it the yeah, nostalgia they did have two. kick? Yeah, was it the nostalgia kick that I was wanting? Was it the 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 good feels like vibe moment that I was wanting? No, it wasn't. Look, they didn't even have a PSA. What the fuck was up with that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly but unique. on that same token there are things that are doing it enough if you watch robot chicken and you've let you you know where we're going like they intentionally throw things in from like childhood and then give it this you know kind of um raucous spin you know um the, they they had the GI Joe and they had like they have a there's one of those ones where they've got the new guy and like he kind of he's really you know smart and really knows what he's doing and he's a sniper shot you know and he wants to like you're trying to come up with his name and he falls and slips in some coke and they call him fumbles and he's like I'm not fumbles so he goes to the other side and then kills all the Joes ha ha ha. <laughs> Sorry, just uh, I don't think either of us watched Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken so oh, you yeah. don't? Yeah, please do. I mean, well, yeah. If you want nostalgia, watch Robot Chicken. Mm. It's very much like they use like in some ways they actually use the figures, like actually like the action figures and what have you from the from that nostalgia trip. Right. right. So yeah. Well, what I think is interesting is like so I used to listen to. Um, the Nerdist podcast years ago. Um, and then now it's ID10T and Chris. It's not the three hosts anymore. It's just mostly Chris and it's not as frequent. But what's interesting is he talked at one time years ago about how culture, pop culture flipped and the youth are now adults and they get to dictate what they want. Mm hmm. And they became the content creators and nerds became cool and Dungeons mm -hmm. and Dragons became cool. And mm -hmm. like, you know, like, you know, so the outcasts became part of the in crowd. And I thought that was a very interesting, like, you know, viewpoint that he t had taken back then. But I, so I think that's all a piece of this, this situation right now that folks are very much like, I think it's almost impossible to have anything that was quote unquote mainstream when we were kids not be on a second, third or fourth, like, you know, trip around, call it a review, call it a reinvention, a redevelopment, a re-release, whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that people were really um, wanting that kind of stuff. And so by asking right. the questions, you know, I was, I was kind of, tongue in cheek, but it'll be a little serious, you know, like, um, because this thing later this year, you know, I was thinking about it and I caught myself searching on the internet just this very past week for things that are modern that have things from my childhood incorporated. Mm hmm. And that's really, I just realized as I'm saying it, like, that's what brought this about. Cause I was like, wait, why am I, why am I on this hunt? Why have I set up eBay searches for a thing 
that Ooh. I'm presuming exists now, but I don't want to pay full price for it. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, and, and, and it was because then I was like, wait, do I need this thing? Do I have mm. to have it? And mm. the answer is no, it is not a functional part of my life. It will not be required. Mm -hmm. And yet the the pull, the desire was so strong. Yeah. To obtain this thing because it was a pivotal like impact in my life in my childhood that it means a lot to me so I wanted some representation yeah and then I've really started thinking about it and I'm like okay this is a mega like big multi-international corporation and they are just milking me that's <laughs> Right, they are just I mean milking me for money because right. technically this is not needed, it is not a requirement. It yeah. in, in theory will become landfill fodder later like because <laughs> the likelihood of it being passed on, it will not be an heirloom, it will not be a legacy. Do you know what I mean? Like Right, right, um, right. So, yeah, that's really kind of I guess what brought this about it, but it got me yeah. thinking about how much stuff is out there in the marketplace right now mm -hmm. that people can have. Like, I mean, like Funko Pops. Here's just an example. Funko Pops at one time were were kind of co very collectible. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're not collectible now, but baby, I don't even, I can't begin to imagine the thousands of different ones that exist. But there was mm -hmm. a time that there was not that many. And so when a design of a, of a figure got released, it was a big freaking deal right and now it seems like anything could be one <laughs> and so yeah. I'm and like, in addition I'm, you know to kind of again like you're saying to kind of pull people's nostalgia strings mm. they're doing a lot of things from like the past yeah um i bet if i looked up anything in funko i would probably find a funko pop Meaning like something from the past and then put Funko at it. Right. I'd probably find some kind of something related to our official quote unquote Funko pop. Right. Like I'm I'm fairly certain I would. Yeah. Um and I and and again, like you said, the whole milking of things, like that's the T there. It's like we want you to feel those feels that you had back then. So why don't you go get this thing? Or mm -hmm. buy this thing. Right. Or look at this shirt that has all these fun 80s things. Um, for me right now, it has been... Uh, so I watch... So Facebook now has these, what, reels? I think it is reels now. Where there's video upon video of th like just like 10, 20 second or 30 second video. Sometimes a little bit longer. And there's one person, one guy on there. I cannot remember his name right now. And that tells you how much I pay attention to some of this is, <laughs> but his whole thing is like, Hey, remember this thing from the eighties or nineties, you were a kid growing up and he will like talk about it for a little bit and talk about it from a personal perspective and some of them, and then give you a little like clip, like clip or glimpse of it. Like whether it's a uh, commercial for a item that you would have seen, like when you were a kid, like in the nineties or eighties, or it's a, theme song from a TV show that you remember because you watched it as a kid kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's those kind of moments. Um, he does do some specific things, but those are the ones that pop in my head right now. Mm -hmm. And they're probably really popular up there on Reels because people are nostalgic for it. They're seeing it and going, oh, I remember that. I remember that show. Or I was like, oh, this is really cool. And Oh, I didn't remember. I didn't realize that at the time because I wasn't a kid. You know, he one of the things is he does is he has jokes that were in certain shows and how when you're a kid, you, it probably didn't register. But as an adult. Yeah, it's there. Right. So I think this this topic that is kind of a comment on market capitalism on like that whole concept of. You know, if I can make a buck from it, someone's going to someone's going to want to buy this thing. 
Yeah. And obviously stuff that is that was once popular can be popular again. Yeah. Hence people are buying up shit, you know, that is a replica is a nod to or or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it was just one of these things that kind of came up for me and I was like, man, like, like is have, but you know, would we still be as rabid or as interested in these things if the world was a better place and we weren't as stressed? That's kind of really what Mm. my second question is like, like, would we care as much to own these things that give us comfort or happy memories if we go back, say, three or four years. Well, if we go back, let's do this. Let's go back seven years. We'll go back to 2015. You know what I mean? If, if mm-hmm, here in the mm-hmm. U.S. we had not been through what we have been through for the past, like, six years. Fair. You know, like, like would we, would we still, you know, be in this kind of, Wanting back what has been lost, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's an interesting thought. Um, that's an interesting question because I, I'm, I kind of had to think about it because I think it is something that has changed because we are looking for an escape. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Pandora being what it was. And still is. Um, and even before that, just the world's climate and the state's climate um, not too, not that long ago, sometimes you need something to take you out of the, the, the swirling <laughs> like tragedy going on around you, just even if it's just for a few moments. Right. And I can see where this this the nostalgia train is going because you do want that um you want that feeling you want that like that 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 escape um one of the you know things best things that have come out of the recent years um that is a full-on nostalgia trip is shows like um stranger things right like talk about a perfect example of a new thing that is like spoon feeding us, if not an, a direct IV line mm-hmm. of all these elements from other things that we already experienced before, but it's different. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, you remember Swanson TV dinners? You know you do. You <laughs> loved them. Well, you guess didn't. what, baby? <laughs> Banquet's on the scene and Banquet has stepped up their game. You know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm, like, you mm-hmm. know, so it, it, it's just, I, I mean, it's not necessarily the best analogy, but that's how I feel. It's kind of like, I don't know if I want to say it's on, and this is an overused like statement. It's not on steroids, like, but it's definitely amped in a way. But I think that's why I really love Stranger Things because, man, is it something of an experience to see Mm -hmm. the Duffer brothers like put their childhood out there for us to watch, but through a certain lens Mm -hmm. because uh, so, and the reason why I'm saying all that is if you've seen season four, there is so much visually that is delivered in season four. They are totally pulling stuff right out of like 1983, 1984, 1985, going into 1986. It's insane. Mm. I mean, it, it, it's almost like let's take the pop culture of those three or four years, pour them in a put, put it all in a blender, hit puree, walk away, come back. I'm going to serve you up a tall glass of this smoothie, baby, and you're just going to love it because you don't quite know what it is. But mm-hmm. you know, and and so I really feel that's been an interesting. Thank you for bringing that up because that's a, that's a really true observation. But it's different mm-hmm. because it's not. Look at this He-Man T-shirt. Right. Look at this She-Ra backpack. Right. It's different, and yet it's still evoking of that so, 
thing that time. Yeah, like I'll just use a perfect example because I'm gonna and I'm gonna dig on your background here for a second, Gary. Um, yeah, just get bear with me. So when people quote unquote think of the '80s, they think of things like your background with all these rad neon colors and mm. yada 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 and all that stuff. But what Stranger Things does is they take it to the reality of the 80s now was that stuff there absolutely but it wasn't like the popular fatty like things um that were always there no honey you had wood paneling you had (laughs) wicker chairs you had (laughs) you know beige and ugly colored couches you had all of this like Drab, drab, drab. You had a lot of it. And that's, there were some sparks of color and, you know, makeup and all that stuff. There were, there were these things, obviously, but like people would go look at your background and go, oh, that's totally 80s. Like, oh my gosh, like totally 80s. There was whole this things and all that stuff. But reality is sometimes it wasn't that neon. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you are 100%, uh, you know, in this moment, Damon, because the backdrop that I picked for us that Damon's referring to for our video feed is this what people think of when it comes to the 80s. It's what's been marketed as the 80s. I learned this with the run a couple of years ago when we did a 60s theme and it was very hippie um, and we called it Woofstock. And everybody was like talking about Woodstock, but it's like a, in reality, Woodstock is a milestone, but Woodstock is also kind of a big fantasy of a lot of people because mm-hmm. they think they know what that experience was like and they think they know what hippies were like. And, and you know, it's like, well, only if you lived in that time do you understand it. And so like a lot of our like throwback to previous decades is a manufactured slice of that time frame. It's not really truly representative because you are a hundred on like the aesthetic. We, I was born in the seventies. All three of us were born in the seventies, right? No, um, no. Jeff is 80, 80, 80. Oh, okay. 80. Yeah. But that's close enough. Like, cause what I mean, be, that- be, because I had, had older siblings who were born in 71 and 77 or 76. Right, right, right. I, I kind of got exposure to 70s. Well, no, but here's the thing is, like, 80s close enough because the 70s was ugly. <laughs> it was lemon yellow, tangerine orange, avocado, like, pukey green, and chocolate brown, baby. Like, those were the primary colors of the home decor aesthetic rattan wicker was the thing like if you thought bell bottoms and like you know some of the fashion like Mm -hmm. all that stuff was questionable the 80s was trying to improve on that we ended up with leisure suits we ended up with all sorts of crazy shit in the very beginning of the 80s and it is so true that you were like everyone thought that's what the 80s was but the reality is is like this pop neon punk like Mm -hmm. whatever like these are all elements that existed but it's not truly truly the case which is why it is a crime and it is reality that will buyer as a character in stranger things has that bowl cut because (laughs) many of us did when we were that like age that young back then as white people let me let me let me (laughs) put this note on the very end Because I'm looking at you, Damon, and I was like, I knew, I knew, I knew that you were going to say something like, well, not all of us had that haircut. <laughs> Please forgive, I broke it, Damon. He'll be back in a moment. <laughs> in about, like, five minutes. But, I mean, like, I remember distinctly corduroy pants like three inch, like wide vertical rugby striped shirts. Like there was this thing about the fashion end of the time. Like right. you were trapped in it and you could not escape it. Right. And, you know, yeah. it's still kind of true today, but it, it's not as impactful. Probably mm-hmm. all the way up until about 2005, uh, maybe not quite to 2010, the West Coast really set the trend on a lot of stuff. And that's what I think happened in the eighties 
uh, I realize we've diverged on the subject, but like in terms of like fashion, the eighties was really kind of driving. I mean, I remember like, you know, Valley girls and Valley talk was like this thing and like malls became a thing and like, you know, and like everything. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. And like, and, yeah, and, totally. Well, and uh, the shoulder pads. Right, right, right. Like, and so a lot of stuff came, you know, from different areas and kind of uh, influence stuff, but uh, back to Damon's earlier point. Stranger Things is very interesting because it's much more grounded in reality of what the experience was like to live in those times, especially because it takes place in Hawkins in the Midwest. And so it's right. not it's not a major metropolitan area. It's not the East Coast. It's not the West Coast. Yet in this most recent season, if you see season four, they go to the West Coast of California. So you do get some of that element. Uh, yeah. Put in there. Yeah. That's very interesting. Sorry. I was just thinking about Damon. I was like, oh, I wonder if that was intentional. <laughs> on the Duffer brothers part to help bring in that nostalgia, yeah. that yeah. representation of the impact on culture. Yeah. And one of the ways to do that is to literally put some of the characters out in California. Right. Right. I don't know. And, and again, um, it, it's, it's so very like, again, nostalgic and finding these things that will like hit like moments, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, you know, you know, if we, I think I, I have not watched season three and four of Stranger Things. I will admit that right now I'm working through stuff. I'm trying to, <laughs> like, it's, I'm watching a lot of stuff at lunch is what I've been trying to do. And, uh, I was going to watch, um, uh, Stranger Things season three. Um, but I ended up watching Charm season two because it, it's the thing that popped in my head first, but I'll get to that in, in a second. <laughs> um, the, ideas like the the looks and feels of all of like stranger things is a perfect example there are other things that have been modernized like you will take something old nostalgic and then bring it up to date um mm -hmm. one of my favorite examples is something like riverdale um where you took something that a lot, I think a lot of us, especially the 80s, and I mean, obviously earlier than that, because uh, Archie and stuff has been along forever. But you take it, spin it, throw it into modern time, and you get this very intriguing show um, that it, it, it gives you some of those nostalgia feels, but then it gives you newer feelings. If that makes sense. It gives you something more modern to hold on to. Um, yeah, I just, I was, I, I appreciate a lot of those kind of things because what it's doing, while it is giving you a little hint of those moments, it's not literally regurgitating, you know, the 80s or the 90s or what it was. It's not regurgitating it. It's literally giving you something new or a new spin or a new take rather than, hey, remember this show from your childhood? Mm -hmm. Well, here it is again. And the background I was going to pick um, was a perfect example of that because it, it just keeps coming back. And that's Care Bears. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wait, Care Bears is back? It's been back. It'll come back. It'll probably be back here in a little bit, too. It's one of those ones where it just keeps state. Basically, I don't know if it ever left. Well, I feel like it left. And then it comes back. And then they do it again. And then they then they goes away. And then it comes back. And now it's computer animated. And now they're, you know, and then it goes away. Now I think it comes back again. And it's just this very interesting tone. But they're not doing they're not doing much different with it. I mean, they could try, but it doesn't always succeed. Bear right. with me as I jump into Wikipedia to kind of confirm what I was thinking about. Oh, that's new. Hmm. That's a new thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think... Yeah. Sorry, I have several different <laughs> thoughts going on at one time. Um, I, 
I, I think there's definitely, you know, you're not you're not wrong, Damon, in, in looking at it that way. Um, okay. You know, it's funny because you were talking about like the Care Bears being back and Jeff kind of asked about that. I was like, well, to me, that's like the Smurfs. The Smurfs were huge and then they kind of went away and then they came back and there was like a movie and they kind of went away. And they're supposed to be, you know, last I knew there was this live action thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's kind of mm-hmm. like um, some might be thinking that like, boy, they're really kind of milking it. And I'm like, well, some might argue and be like, yeah, but we're introducing a new generation to, right. you know, blah, that's, blah, blah. That's that's like funny. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Friendship is magic. Was it was a huge hit? I don't yep. remember if it's still on or not. I don't think it's still on, but I do. I do. You're you're right, Jeff. It's introducing something to a new market. Um, make well. Let me re- rephrase. Making something old new again. That's kind of what it feels like. Um, because uh, oh wow. Yeah, so current TV series, Care Bears Unlock the Magic, February 1st, 2019. Yeah, de- debuted on Boomerang's SVOD. Yeah. Uh, for those not in the know, SVOD stands for Subscription VOD. So basically you have to subscribe to the uh, Boomerang. Mm. Oh, okay. And to the OTT market. Interesting. So the boomerang. If you have the boomerang channel, it wouldn't show Care Bears. Unlock, unlock the magic. It would just show. It wouldn't show anything. Good hmm. lord! But what you know, like you're looking at. Sorry, I'm just looking at this most recent iteration of the show, and they've done what a lot of these nostalgia, childhood kind of things do. Um. They've given you a very limited amount of characters, mm-hmm. but they're all their none of the names have changed. So you get some of the same kind of care bears, but obviously they're a this is them in 2019. We'll use that as an example. Um but oh hey, I remember that name. I recognize that name. And you know, for I'll just call it a list. Like Good Luck Bear is one of the bears that's in the most recent one. If Good Luck Bear is not green, we're having a problem. <laughs> like th- those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, There's always fair. the Care Bear cousin. Yeah. Right. So uh, in the live chat, Cody had said, how do you differentiate between products being sold for the sake of nostalgia and products being sold because they were uh, a previous marketing success. So when I hear that question, I think of immediately the Star Wars action figures and how they're being re-released in new packaging, like different size. Um, what is it? Um, Sideshow Productions, I want to say, is a company that makes these amazing replica, like larger scale versions. Um, so I, that's what I think of. And the reason why I think of that is it's a really good question. Like, is it, you know, more the latter that they're re re releasing it, quote unquote, you know, reintroducing it because it was such a, a big deal before? Mm hmm. I don't know. Like, yeah. I think it's kind of the, the example that I gave. I think it's kind of both. But yeah. I mean, it is a really well, interesting question. I'll give you a, another example that kind of falls on on these lines. Um, Power Rangers. Like okay. Power Rangers was the shit in the 90s. And, you know, they had toys and they mass produced them and marketed them all out and kids, you know, grabbed them. The reason why the Power Rangers for the first three seasons never changed costumes was because the show was so popular. They did. They were concerned that if they follow along the lines of the um, Japanese Sentai, that they would lose that interest because, oh, why did our why did our why are their costumes different? Uh, mm-hmm. they, they they didn't think that the Americans could understand. Yeah, 
Yeah. So for like three years, um, they had literally the same outfits. And they had to do, to counter that, they had to do a lot of um, um, additional shooting filming. of filming. Uh, original filming. So Yeah, original filming. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, but the, the, the show has been around for years. You can say... Oh, hey, it never really went away. But people now probably still have nostalgia for the days of old when they were the first kind of seasons. And what they've been doing recently is they've been re releasing um, toys mm -hmm. that throw back to those times. There's a very popular current Power Rangers comic series mm -hmm. that is based on the original. But it gives you a larger, different story. I don't think it's the same "quote unquote" universe, but it, it's falling along those lines. But it became very popular, um, or has become very popular because it's a a very interesting story and take. And in addition, it is um, again hitting on those nostalgia feels. So when I read um, Cody's question. Um, I think it is some of it is that it is it was a marketing success. We know how popular Power Rangers became, and in a sense, still is. But mm -hmm. I think in different ways. But you can draw on that to be like, oh, hey, you like this show that's on the you know on the Nickelodeons? Well, here are the toys. But the people that are buying those toys more often than not are the adults having those nostalgia feels mm -hmm. for those toys and maybe collecting them, maybe not. Yeah, people just want that uh feeling of like, oh, back in back in my childhood this was popular and I loved it. That sort of thing. Well, I mean that's one of the things that Disney really kind of markets towards is adults giving their children the experiences they had as adults. Right. So having them watch the original animation film, having them like, if they take them to the park, like, you know what I mean? Like to mm -hmm. give them some understanding of this thing that their parents really loved or really enjoy. And I guess like there's an aspect of it that in, it improves the bond between mm -hmm. the parents and the kids, because now they have a common thing that they're both, mm -hmm. you know, um, interested in, or, you know, that they take time together to do something. So, yeah, I mean, to me, it, a, a different way of looking at that, something parallel would be like a, a kid who's being introduced to Legos by their parent, because their parent mm -hmm. was really into Legos when they were young and making mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, now it's like, Lego. It's, there is no S. It's the plural of Lego is Lego. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was saying, the... <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Um, you know, now, like, that's an exact excellent example. Like, there are Lego sets that are IP cross branded with stuff from our youth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like high scale, like kits mm -hmm. to make like massive things. The millennium you know. Falcon. Right. Or if you want something on an adult fair, I, I say adult, there could be children interested, like um, landmarks of architecture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, I think of the Falling Water set. I personally like Frank Lloyd Wright architecture. When they released that that kit or whatever, I was like, <gasps> I was like, that's amazing. And there was a part of me that's like, I would love to have it. Like, I would love to own it and put it together. And then I think after a couple of minutes, I was like, and then what would I do with it? <laughs> you know, it's like, I've already been to the home twice. Like, I've, I've toured it. I've seen it. Like, eh, you know, like, and that's, I think that's why I was asking these questions just purely for this episode is like, I, I'm a little concerned that people get caught up in the nostalgia of something. And they're like, Oh my God, I got to have it. Like, blah, 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 you know? Um, and then it's like, yeah, but then what? And, and, and that's totally up to everybody. They, they do their own thing, you know? Um, 
but I see I see that happen quite often. Um, mm-hmm. Like games from our youth, video games getting redone. Like now they're in 4D and high definition, and you know, instead of 8 bit or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Final Fantasies, uh, most Final Fantasy games have had some sort of remake. Right. Well, I mean, I think of like Legend of Zelda mm-hmm. is a whole IP thing that's been around for a long time, but has also been kind of, I don't want to say reinvented, but like, you know, had some had some things done. And and I only know of that because I have a friend who's real who was really into it when they were younger and they're younger than me. So mm-hmm. like to see how it's affected them that stuff's coming back around in a way. I don't know. I just find that interesting. So that's yeah. really what this episode was about. I was just kind of ask those, you know uh questions of thought not really expecting us to have an answer although jeff pretty much out the gate was like yes <laughs> <laughs> is nostalgia being marketed to us well yeah right, right. <laughs> i mean absolutely yeah. like to get it back to that moment yes is it being marketed yes is it Tugging on that string, absolutely. fucking it, it It is, and it is, in a sense, I'm going to use this term, it's blinding you to something. Yeah. You know, I've been, quote unquote, I won't say lucky, but I've been, I keep, like, I'm not, I'm not while I have my nostalgia moments, it, it's rare that I actually follow up with the purchasing of said items because i think my logic rational brain goes while that's really nice to have what are you going to do with it once you get it right like that's what that's for things but but yeah you get it because whenever i think of nostalgia i think of media a lot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nowadays with with uh the rise of the OTT market. If anybody doesn't know what that means, that means over the top, which is basically internet streaming of anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Netflix, Disney Plus, uh, HBO Max, etc. What I would really like to see to help be able to scratch that nostalgia itch is the main services, or even if they collaborate into another little service like nostalgia plus or something like that because plus seems mm. to be the all the range nowadays um is if i want to watch 10 speed and brown shoe just a little old television show that i just pulled out of the ether which i don't think is anywhere on streaming or uh oh even better the old show that I loved to death called Mask, the Momo Armored uh, Strike Command. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if I want to see that streaming, it should be available in some place. Um, I really think they need to basically take all this archive content that they're not putting in because, well, people... What, the, there isn't much people interest in watching this, so it's not going to make us a lot of money. Yeah, but what if you just had it available? You know, it's there. You have it all with the, this other content. If you mm-hmm. have content that that you're not using at all anywhere, put it on your platform. Or maybe just join forces. I mean, Fox, NBC, ABC has Hulu, you know? Maybe throw it up there if you want to. Yeah, but if they could just like be like, okay, we don't have exclusive thing with anybody, our platform's not really it. Let's do this like cheap platform to make some money off of this stuff, and do it like a, a, a five bucks a month, and you get access to all of this. Not many people would watch us necessarily content, and then watch they see that there's a whole bunch of subscribers because they want to watch Mask and Ten Speed and Brown Shoe and maybe the old. Original Voltron series. Speaking of which. It's. I like the idea. I think what will come down to it. Especially here in the United States. Is 
the the rights for some mm-hmm. of the stuff. That's going to be the big thing. And again, I think it's. I mean, to be to again, if no one's using it. Yeah, all I'm saying is, yeah, if it, no one is if nobody's if, using yeah. it. Yeah, put it somewhere that, so that people can make money from it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Someone will probably make money from it somehow, somewhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you. You could probably find stuff again. You know, we know YouTube is a thing. Uh, if you really wanted to try to find it, you can probably find something. I know, somewhere. but I want a legal method. Yeah, everyone wants a legal and method. And something that's really easy and it's not distorted in order to avoid copyright claim. <laughs> yeah. And and again, like I said, that's that's that would be it would be amazing if that could happen. But I don't know if that's. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I'm, this is just saying but, this is my wish. I find it interesting. It's probably though. more complicated than I know of because what do I know? But, but I could see it happening though. But I mean, like It'd if it's something that up. that Warner Brothers has the rights to, have it up on HBO Max. You know, if uh, NBC, the Universal has the rights to it, have it up on on um, Peacock. Uh, Peacock. And the thing is, with it, and even with that Peacock, throw it up in the free tier. You don't think much people will watch it? Well, at least get a, get for whoever watches it. They get the commercials on there, and if they pay for the premium, well, they get it without the ads. You know that sort of thing. So, right. it's it's one of those things where it's like, in this day and age, if you still have the video, and yeah, that's and you should just too. have it have it available. It, it should just be digit just digitize it. Even if it's like being like, okay, we we would need to digitally remaster this to make it look good. I'd be like, you know, I'd rather you just at least get it up yeah. and make it look <laughs> like the old, old stuff stuff, and then maybe be like, if you do have some time to do it, great. If not, just put in like nostalgia. <laughs> maybe a slight yeah. disclaimer in the front. This is the exact original <laughs> broadcasting. Like I wanted, <laughs> like I would. Uh, there was uh, something I was looking for. Just for some reason, I wanted to watch the old TV show Viper. It had four seasons. I think it was like one season on NBC, and then it was syndicated for the other three. Um, which was just, it was like a Knight Rider knockoff where the car was a Dodge Viper. Except without an AI in it. I vaguely remember this. I do not. It's it. it that's another like thing <laughs> pulled out from of like nowhere. A, like a high ass nostalgia fruit. That's fruit-like. that's nostalgia <laughs> stuff for me. You had to climb up that tree to get to that shit. Like... Yeah, I know. <laughs> and and again, some of these things people post to YouTube because they're not posted anywhere else. So somebody posted it up and nobody's claimed it. So they're still there. Right. Um, so it's just one of those things where I, I just want a repository. Maybe, maybe they could just upload the video to YouTube, their YouTube channel, and just have it for free and just try to get app revenue through YouTube. That would be fine. But mm-hmm. like the actual, like official version, uh, or you know, for the actual rights holder. I mean, th- there's plenty of different ideas, but it's one of the things that bugs the hell out of me is like. There's something I want to watch from years past Cleopatra 2020 or 25, 25. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, that was a pull. That was another pullout. The old, the wow. old Knight Rider 20 uh, or 2000 uh, um, uh, TV movie where Kit was red. God. And it was a completely different car. Yeah, it was clear Patrick 2525. Wow. 2525. Yeah, I couldn't remember. In the year 2525. Yeah. So for wow. the record, I did not know that today's show was gonna be such a memory trip lane for Jeff. But <laughs> there you go. I just want to have that. I want access, even if I yeah. even if it's a paid service. Obviously, no, no, it's I mean, like I... a the the low low rent. Not many people are going to watch it. Probably be a cheap service that right. people are going to go on and off with whenever they just have the itch for something. 
or just toss it into your own catalog if you can. So. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think that's totally fair. There, there has been so much content created in media since the inception of it, like especially with television, um, that there's so much that's missing. It would be it would be good if we had a way back machine, quote unquote, kind of concept like we do for the Internet, but only for media so that people could go find this stuff and see it and, and enjoy it again. That that was not necessarily the biggest hits of its time. That's fair. No, uh, White Christmas is available on streaming uh, on Netflix. The movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. I watch it every year. Um, I, owed it, I owe it. I owed it. <laughs> I own it in digital and, like, hard copy media. Like, I physically have DVDs. Nice. Just because... Like, I liked it so much that I bought it in one format and then eventually, like, just ended up buying the digital because I thought it was easier. Plus, I get really itchy around that time of year because it magically isn't available and you have to pay for it. Mm. And I'm like, oh, really? I I do think that uh, looking at the prices, I I pulled up Just Watch for Holiday Inn. It's like 15 bucks on most platforms. If you're going to buy it. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm. I think nowadays, this, oh, I suppose it's really popular enough and stuff. Like, it's classic. Right. Because Holiday Inn was the first movie that I think had the song Bing Crosby singing White Christmas. Right. That's the original Black and White before White Christmas came along. It has a very problematic segment in it. Well, both of them have problematic segments. In today's context, but anyways. Uh, look, it was what was that? Nineteen fifty four or something like that. It was a long time ago. Yeah. So, anyways, that was that was just the point of today's episode was just to discuss like, eh, do we think do we think it's for sale? Are we are we a part of it? Are we complicit? Like, are yes, we... and I don't care. I'll pay for it. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that answer. <laughs> I was about to say, are we? Are we willing to get part of it? I mean, it, it's really, it, it's definitely a, a, something for for our market. So, it, it, I mean, companies are going to market for anything. So, they're going to make money, anyways. Guess what, folks? That's the end. Oh. Plain ways to contact us. Let us know your nostalgia wishes and hopes and dreams. Now you can do that over at comesoutloud.com. You can comment on a blog, shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 will talk. That's 361 265 8255. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at comesoutloud in the appropriate place of the URL. Or chat us up on Telegram at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you want to see when we're planning or recording these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. And if you would like to get various accoutrements, such as a consent as my four play shirt, uh, I don't know, if we don't have that for sh- Gary shirt up yet, but uh, if you're a patron, you probably got one of those. What? But that's another that's part of this. Um, but uh, if you would uh, like to see some more designs because some of our designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. And it, you could have gotten this uh, Cubs Out Loud Next Generation Anniversary shirt uh, if you were a patron, uh, which if you want to become a patron and possibly get uh, new shirts each year, you can do that over at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or you can just send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can subscribe, rate, review us over on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Spotify, eh, pretty much anywhere where you can get podcasts. Yes, and Brady said review us, so get it, get it. Brady review us will get us more views on from people searching for podcasts. So appreciate that. And, uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box up, box puppy, box cut box, something or other. And Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where I stream bears and dragons. Damon? 
Yeah. If we get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 uh, on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>